Welcome back design students. Let's create a jump animation for our robot character. So if we look at the diagram of the jump animation you'll see that we have uh, a neutral pose, an anticipation pose, a jump, a midair, a fall, and a recovery, and then back to neutral. So we know that in the beginning, at the beginning and the end the robot needs to be the same. So let's um, go ahead and turn on set key and select all of our controllers and set a key at the beginning and then let's move the timeline forward and select the global controller turn on auto key and move the character forward some amount so this is the distance that he will jump but we also need to select all the other controllers turn on set key and set a key because we want him to end as he began in the same stance. Now halfway through of course we want him to be in the air. So let's move to frame 12, grab the body controller, pull that up in the air and then select the global controller and hide it and then grab both the feet controllers and pull them up. And we can actually take one of them and maybe move it forward with the other one a little bit and pull it down and of course we want the feet to be sort of hanging so let's go ahead and create that pose while we're in the air and then we can also take the body controller and maybe move it up a little bit or sorry rotate it up a little bit and I forgot to turn on auto key but I'm going to go ahead and set a key for each controller that I changed and let's check that and make sure that works so far so good now the one thing we don't have is an anticipation and a recovery pose so we need to complete we need to complete those but to do that we need to delay the forward motion of the global controller so let's select that and then I'm going to select its keyframe here I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to copy that forward five frames and that creates what's called a hold frame also need to do the same thing for the um, body controller and the feet controllers. So I'm going to select the left foot in the outliner, pull that forward five frames and I'm holding down shift as I'm copying these. And then we need some time for the recovery. So we're going to pull that back five frames. That would be on frame 21. Hold down shift and pull that back for each foot controller. And the global controller. And the body controller. So now we have this. Now the space in here is where we can create our anticipation pose. So I'm going to move halfway between there, maybe frame two, and we're going to start to create that anticipation pose. So let's start by taking the body controller, and I'm going to turn on auto key this time. I forgot last time. And we're going to crouch our character down. And I think I'm going to rotate his body oops sorry down a little bit like so so then let's see what happens here okay now when he leaves the ground at this point he should be facing forward so we're going to pull him forward 
and then when he leaves the ground like this, his feet need to be pointing down. Now when he hits the ground, he'll hit his recovery pose here. So I'm going to go to frame 23, and I'm going to put him down, and I'm going to rotate him forward a little bit, actually maybe backwards a little bit. I think he would look at the ground. And then right before he lands, between here and here, somewhere in this neighborhood, I think his feet need to be facing when he hits at this point, I feel like his feet need to be facing upwards. So I think his body should be leaning back a little bit, and I think we need to turn on a feature that will help us achieve that. And if we select the body controller and right-click it, we can go to Object Properties and turn on Motion Path. And that turns on a line that shows us the path of the motion of the object we have selected. And this line actually has points on the curve that we can select and edit. And if I scrub backwards a little bit, you can see that these two points are sort of on top of each other, but not here. So I'm going to try and grab this point. That's the wrong one. And smooth that out so it looks more like that one. Let's see what that looks like. And I certainly don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to put that back. So let's try that again. Actually, I feel like the feet need to be forward more. So I'm going to grab this foot here with auto key turned on. I'm going to pull it forward a little bit. I'm going to do the same with this one. And I feel like maybe he should be leaning backwards a little bit more. And maybe looking down at the ground. So let's see what that looks like. That looks much better. All right, so let's play that and see what we have. So now the only thing we need to do is work on the interpolation of each object to add weight to it. So let's right click and bring up the curve editor. And what we're most concerned with now would be the Z position of everything. So we don't want everything to decelerate before it hits the ground. So we need to select those keyframes and change the interpolation. And let's see what that looks like. And then let's select each foot controller and bring up the curve editor and look at its interpolation. We need to worry about the Z position and that's easy. We just grab that one and that one. And then let's select the other foot controller, Z position, 
and grab that one and that one. And now let's see what that looks like. And one final interpolation thing, let's grab the global controller, bring up the curve editor. And we don't want this to um, be an S-curve at all. We want uh, this one to actually not be there at all. And we want this to be a straight line. And this one. Now, of course, if we wanted this to repeat infinitely, I'm going to turn off the um, motion path for now. If we wanted this to uh, repeat infinitely, all we would have to do is um, select all the controllers, bring up the curve editor, move out so we can see everything, select them all, and bring up the in out menu and select relative repeat for in and out. And now if we add 500 frames our character will just jump forever. Now it's not perfect, but you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And that is how you make a jump animation. So make sure you save this one as something different than your beginning file. So you always have a neutral, a clean one to go back to and create more animations. And I'll see you in the next one.